Okay, let's talk about interval and set builder notation. And representing uh, sets of numbers in algebra is extremely important. And when you first start learning algebra, you, kinda, you have kind of like some basic ways that you express intervals and sets of numbers. But as you progress in algebra, you start using uh, more sophisticated uh, techniques. Really not techniques, it's really notation. Uh, something like this, for example. So if you don't know what this is, or like, you know, I've never seen this before, maybe you're familiar with something like this, then, you know, uh, I'm going to explain this to you, right? It's, it, oftentimes in mathematics, the notation, uh, that's, you know, notation is obviously how you write something, is scarier than what it really is. But this is important that you understand this, and if you're not using uh, set builder notation yet in your class, you will uh, certainly be using it in uh, the future, but it's good for you to understand it now and how uh, both of these, uh, the in, both interval and set builder notation work. It's not complicated. So uh, we're gonna get to this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. Basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra two, algebra geometry, algebra one, college algebra. Uh, I'm gonna be launching my pre-calculus course here soon. All my years are, uh, or sorry, all my courses are very, very comprehensive. They take me years to build. So, um, you know, I think that uh, if you're looking for quick tutorials and whatnot, that's not my courses. I do full comprehensive uh, lessons and uh, teach you how to solve thousands of problems. So if you're really serious about learning math, uh, my program can definitely help you out. I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for a test like for the GED, SAT, ACT, AccuPlace, or Alex, uh, teacher certification, nursing, uh, placement exam, all those, there's so many different reasons why people study math outside of a math course because they're taking a very important exam of their lives, which has math in it. So I offer uh, several uh, test preparation courses. I also work with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you're homeschooling, you can use my program as well. Then obviously, if you're just struggling in class, I can uh, definitely help you out. Now, uh, one thing that you need to be doing to help yourself out is be t uh, is taking great math notes. So if you're watching this video, you're obviously interested in mathematics. And if you're interested in math, then we need to really, you know, emphasize what it's, you know, what are some of the principles of studying math so you can be successful in math. And note taking is right up there at the top. And it's kind of my golden rule of decades of teaching mathematics. Those students who take great math notes almost always have great math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students just don't care to take notes. They're like, nah, that's nah, not for me. Well, you know, ultimately you'll end up paying a price for not taking notes. You got to take notes. I stress this all the time because uh, the reality of it is if you don't take great notes, you're going to have a difficult time doing well in math. So improve in your note taking. But in the meantime, you probably need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. Okay, so here um, we have an example of uh, some interval and set builder notation. Let's go ahead and take a look at when we would uh, be thinking about this. So here, for example, I have an inequality. So this says uh, x is less than 2. But what does that mean? Okay, well, uh, it says x is some number, right? So it's some number. Let's write that out. It's some number. But is it one number or multiple numbers? Well, it's not just some number. It's all the numbers that are less than two. So you're like, hmm, that's a lot of numbers, right? So what numbers are less than two? Well, one is less than two, zero is less than two, negative one, and all these decimals and fractions in between these values. So we need a better way to express this. Now, of course, this is perfectly fine um, in terms of a, uh, an expression of what we're trying to say. We're saying all the numbers less than two, but oftentimes we can represent that graphically. Okay, this is uh, interval notation. So what we do is we draw a little number line and we say, okay, here's zero, here is two, and then we draw an open circle at two. Okay, I'll get into this here in a second uh, in terms of interval notation. Um, when you uh, close or fill in the circle or you leave it open. So I'm just showing you how to do something like this. And now I'm, I'm going to ask you, on the number line, where are all the numbers less than two? Well, they're all in this direction, correct? 
So what we can, we're going to do is just draw a little arrow like so. Okay, so this is uh, graphically, okay, the interval notation and the respective graph, okay, of this inequality. So we're talking about all these numbers right here, okay, are solutions to this particular inequality. So this is an example of interval notation. We're talking about an interval of numbers, okay? Now, let's take a look at this problem right here. Let's scoot this guy out of the way for a second. All right, so uh, uh, another example of interval notation would be this interval right here. So let's just draw a number line, okay? And we have two values, negative five and 13. So here's negative five and here's positive 13. So the way you wanna do this, you wanna draw open circles like this. Now let's interpret what we're uh, talking about here. So what is this saying? Well, we're saying all the numbers or some numbers, but this X is represents all numbers that are greater than or equal to negative five, but less than and equal to uh, positive 13, okay? So those numbers would be right here, okay? So we have to really kind of interpret this interval and then we can just show this graphically. So this is interval notation, right? Now, the catch here is this. Notice when I have like, this is less than, not less than or equal to, but here we have less than or equal to this little underline right there. When you have the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we fill in the little circles like this, okay? So this would be the respective graph, and this is a representation of all the sets of numbers, okay, the entire set of values that go from uh, negative five, including negative five, all the way to positive 13. So all these numbers here are the solution uh, to this particular inequality, or this inequality here, graphically, we can write like so, okay? So you're probably familiar with that, and if you uh, aren't, you definitely uh, should be familiar with just a basic inequality like this. All right, now let's talk about set builder notation. So let's uh, do a couple things here. Let's do x is greater than, uh, let's do x is greater than two, okay? So the interval notation, what I just was doing, here would be zero, for example, and this would be two. So we're gonna draw a little circle at two, and this is saying what? All numbers greater than two. All right, so we're gonna uh, point our arrow right here because numbers increase this way. There's three, there's four, et cetera. So interval notation would be x is greater than two, and here it is graphically. Now, we have something called set builder notation, and this is a little more sophisticated um, way of representing sets of numbers in uh, more advanced mathematics, but it's not difficult to understand. And here is uh, how we would write this set, okay, these values using set builder notation. So what we're gonna do, um, when you have an open circle, okay, open circle, you're gonna use parentheses, either this one or that one, okay? When we have a closed circle, you're gonna use these brackets, okay? Now, one thing that we're gonna be using is infinity. Anytime you see infinity, that's going to be open brackets, okay? Just so, just kinda of keep these basic rules in mind. So now let's go ahead and do this. So this would be an open bracket, okay? This one, because we're starting here, okay? So this is like our start point we're starting, okay, our start, and this would be our end point, okay? Now, of course, you could have a start point like this and an end point like that, any, any kind of different you know, uh, number of combinations uh, like this, okay? But just so you know, the open uh, parentheses or brackets would be your starting, and then these guys like this or like this would be your ending. And we're gonna do a few examples here so you can kind of uh, get this, but this is set builder notation. All right, so here we'll have an open at two, and all these numbers are going to where? Well, these guys are continuing on to positive infinity. So we're gonna put a comma, like so, and then we'll put a positive infinity and an open bracket. Remember, with infinity, it's always gonna be an open bracket. So this is set builder notation for this interval, okay? So you would say, oh, okay, it's uh, uh, starting at two, but not including two, and it goes all the way out to positive infinity. Now, let's go ahead and close this guy up like so. How would that change our set builder notation? Well, we change our, um, our opening bracket, our opening, our parentheses would go away and we'd have a uh, bracket like so, 
Okay, so remember, anytime you have a closed circle, you would have this. And let's change our interval notation to match this. It would be this, right? X is greater than or equal to the positive 2. Okay, so hopefully that's like, all right, that's not too bad. If you can kind of follow these basic rules, um, you're going to be just fine. So let's do another example. Okay, I'll erase all this. And hopefully you're out there like, okay, that's not too bad. Okay, now over here, okay, is positive infinity. And over here is negative infinity, right? It's like the largest possible negative values way over here and the largest possible positive values over here. So let's talk about um, maybe this interval. Let's go negative 1, 2, 3. And we'll close. Well, let's do this. Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and give this to me an interval notation and set builder notation. Let's see if you can do this. Okay, so let's do this uh, first in interval notation. So this is all x's, okay, that are greater than but not equal to negative 1 and less than and or equal to positive 3. Okay, so there's your interval notation. So this is the number and this is the graph of that. Now, graphically speaking, this would be what? We have an open circle. So remember, open circle is going to be our, our parentheses. So it's going to be a parenthesis, negative 1, comma. That's our starting point, kind of like from left to right. And then we're going to go to positive 3. Now, am I going to use a parenthesis or a bracket? Remember, this is a closed circle. So that's going to be a bracket, and it's an ending bracket like so. Okay, and there you go. That's your set builder notation. Not difficult, okay? All right, let's do one more quick example. And let's see here. How about here? Here's a bonus problem for you. Not difficult. What if we have the entire set of real numbers? Now, what do I mean by that? Those are all the numbers on the number line. How will we write that in set builder notation? Okay? All right, so... What we're talking about, we don't really use x, it's just all x's, right? So what we're going to do here is it's going to be open parentheses. Okay, we're starting at negative infinity. Remember, infinity is always going to have open brackets, and then we're going to go to positive infinity like so. Okay, this right here is a set builder notation for the set of all real numbers, which would mean all the numbers on the real number line. Okay, so I could do other examples, but hopefully you kind of get the gist of this, right? You're going to have to be able to go between a interval notation, the graph, and set builder notation. But set builder notation is uh, the more sophisticated way, okay, that uh, you'll see sets represented in uh, mathematics. So if your teacher's not using this yet, don't worry about it. You know, they'll, you know, eventually you'll kind of be introduced to this. But remember, like sets, um, these are very, uh, you know, come into mind when you're studying things like function, domain, range, inequalities, and whatnot. So this is not just some trivial way of notation that you're not going to use in, you know, your study of mathematics. You're definitely going to cross, um, you know, these various notations. But remember, math is a language, and notation is the way we write things, okay? So it doesn't, you know, when you're not familiar with something, the first time you see it, it always looks scary. You're like, oh, no, that's that's too difficult. Don't let the notation, you know, um, you know, put too much fear in you. What you have to do is just learn it, embrace it, and then you'll be like, oh, that was not, that's not too bad, okay? And hopefully this video, if I did my job, was like, hmm, okay, pretty good, I understand, and it was worth my uh, time to watch the video. And if that's the case, definitely please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great place for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way. And if you like my teaching style, I uh, definitely encourage you to check out my playlist. I have uh, several playlists, Basic to Advanced Math, on my channel. Hundreds and hundreds of videos there, and I'm posting new stuff all the time. But my best stuff will always be uh, my, in my math help program. Okay, These are the things that have taken me years and years and years to build. Very, very uh, effective, used by many, many people. Okay, And hopefully you'll want to uh, you know, be curious enough to check that out, see if that could help you out as well. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.